Hey, we're here at the National Machine Welding Shop where we're doing some titanium welding. I've got Jeff Capen with me, welding technician. He's actually welding on a titanium water tank. And what he's got is a puddle at about 3,000 degrees. He's got an oversized gas lens with a trail cup shielding. Make sure he keeps argon on his weld at all time and even during the cooling phase. And you can see that he's got kind of a tab slot type weld where he's dabbing filler, dab, dab. And every welder's got their own technique. And he's getting he's getting near the end of this weld. Okay, he'll add a little extra filler and then he'll he'll back off on the foot control. Let it re-solidify. And okay, he's got it solid now. Okay, now he's holding the argon over the weld while it cools down. That'll take him about 10 seconds. And he has a series, a series of these to do. You can see it's already pre-tacked. Titanium is actually a very easy metal to, uh, to weld because it's so clear, it gets very liquid. You know, we had mentioned in earlier series that uh, titanium is a reactive alloy. And what that means is when it's at elevated temperatures like it is right now, it tries to absorb anything around it. Now, the one thing that we've got to make sure doesn't happen is it cannot absorb oxygen or nitrogen. It really does like argon, though, and so uh, we're using a lot of it. Uh, this particular water tank, are, are you welding it with this material because uh, titanium is lightweight or yes. what's, what's the real reasons for it? Titanium is a it's very light, uh, uh, very durable, very, it's got a high tensile strength and um, it's just a really nice material to work with. All of our wells on these tanks have to be 100% penetrated through the material. On the other side of this weld, on the top surface, it'll look almost identical. So it looks like it was welded from the top and the bottom. So our welds are a little bit thicker than normal. I just did a fast pass prior to this well here because we had some gaps between the two materials. Again, we're welding sixty thousandths to twenty thousandths. We have a boroscope machine camera that uh, we insert into the tank to make sure that we also have 100% penetration on all of our wells, baffles, and seams.
you know, Jeff's doing a great job here. He's got the liquid puddle going very nicely. It's, it's flowing beautifully. He's dabbing with good repetition. He's coming to a, an area that's built up a little bit too much, so he's letting it stay there a little longer. Got his rhythm going again. Just looks absolutely excellent. Notice he's got just a little oscillation going, and that's because he's got just a small amount of gap in that weld joint. Let's make sure he catches both sides. Yeah, didn't want to overrun the weld. You can see the dab, dab, just really good repetition. That's a 24 inch long weld. It takes a lot of stamina to do that. That's okay. He got out of position a little bit. The best thing to do is stop and restart, reposition yourself. Very nice. Good gas coverage. Excellent gas coverage. There's no signs of bluing. There's no signs of alpha case. And I'll stop about three quarters of an inch deep prior to the, getting to the edge here because the trailing shield will not stop the oxygen from getting up underneath there. So I'll just stop here. I, I was watching your wells and I was actually noticing uh, the, the welding cup that you've got and the trail cup that you've got. Yep. And if you could turn that over, open it up just a little bit. It's an oversized gas lens with a trail cup, and that's producing a trailing shield of argon. Yes. So, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this weld being perfectly silver, and uh, it's just hard to find these days. Um, well, I get to a lot of shops uh, across the country and throughout the world, and I don't find welding quality quite this good. So uh, I just want you to know my hat's off to you. It, it looks like you're doing absolutely everything right. Uh, and I also noticed we're, we're here in the shop and you're using argon gas, correct? Yes. Okay, now uh, you're purging. It looks like you're purging what, in two different areas? I'm purging this tank in two different spots. I got it coming in the back and I've got it coming in, the, in this other side here. Um, I'm also using an uh, oxygen uh, trace monitor. Measures uh, oxygen traces at uh, uh, parts per million. Right now I got it at 15.3. Okay. Our SOP, standard operating procedure, requires us to be under 100. Okay, so and, you're uh, well in the margin then. Well in the margin, yes. And I like I act, I I like to be under 20, under 30, myself, okay. just to make sure that all is well. All right. And, uh, well, you know, all of these devices are put into place because titanium material is very expensive, and you just can't screw up on it. Otherwise, you have uh, a lot of lost dollars. And if you're going to do this, you might as well do it right. And I noticed throughout the shop, this company is doing it right. Now, this monitor that he's referring to actually measures the parts per million of nitrogen and or oxygen. And he's welding at 11 parts per million. In most of my aerospace applications, I use 50 parts per million as a standard operating. Anything below that is excellent. And obviously, this is excellent. We're at 11 to 12 right now. The real summary of this is that we look at the color of the weld to determine how good you did it. And because you did it in silver, I mean, I'm looking at this weld right here, which is about, what, what 24 inches long? Yes. And it's absolutely perfect. So uh, your procedures are good. Uh, I, I can't praise you anymore. So just keep up the good work. All right. Well, thank you very much. 
Well, we're back in the uh, production well shop where I have the production manager, Paul Lacasio. Paul, thanks for showing up here. Oh, thanks for having me, Wyatt. Well, I notice you've got a part here that looks like it's nearly finished. Is it uh, almost finished or is it ready to go? Uh, this part's about 90% from uh, finished. We have some uh, brackets and some hardware that still needs to be put on, okay. but it's uh, very close to being finished. Okay. Well, I'm doing a mock-up inspection here, and uh, it's not tough uh, to take a look at these wells. I've noticed throughout the shop there's actually a guide that will tell you whether you've got a good weld or not. So I'm just going to hold the guide up here, and uh, I'm going to point to this weld right here and try to compare it to the colors on here. Okay, what you're, what you're going to notice is the best you can get is glossy silver. And most of the wells on here are glossy silver. Every once in a while you get a little light straw, which is still very acceptable. Now here's one that becomes a lot of controversy, but you need to know that it still is acceptable. Uh, you'll see this uh, dark straw in the weld region. This area right here is a heat affected zone. Dark straw is still prevalent there. Now if you'll notice there's a blue or purple, this is so far out of the region, most people think it's rejectable, and it's not. So take a look at these charts, and like I say, I see one at just about every well booth, and you can see what's, what's truly rejectable, this purple, this blue on the weld, uh, yellow, and you know, the worst case scenario is this right here, it's called white alpha case, and it means you probably lost your argon gas somewhere along the way. So as I look at all the different fittings, all the different welds, uh, it, by far, it hits these two categories. So uh, you, you got the Mr. Tig approval. All right. <laughs> Thank you. I want to identify a couple of things that this company is certified to. One is called ISO 9100. The other one is called NADCAP. Both of those are accreditations uh, that you have to have in aerospace. Now, one of the things I noticed is that we've got a weld rod cabinet that's uh, definitely well under control. I've got Paul Ocasio with me, who is the uh, shop manager or production manager here at the weld shop. Uh, Paul, tell me a little bit about the controls that you have here. Well, we have our, our weld wire locked up, so no outside people can grab it or mistakenly or anything. Um, anything that's pulled out of here, we have the, the, the certs and the, the heat lot number and all the information for that particular weld wire that's in here. Uh, everything is uh, signed out. It's signed out to the job, uh, and so the heat lot number, the person who took it, and the, the job they're taking it for is all documented right here. Okay, so this wire is well controlled to make sure the right wire gets into the right part. Is that correct? Very, uh, very well controlled. Okay, now I noticed at every weld booth that when you get down to a real short stub on your wire, there's a container that says weld rod stubs. Yeah. What do you do with those? Well, every, uh, all of our stubs are, are uh, disposed of in a non-retrievable container. That way it uh, can't be mistakenly used for anything else. Okay. So it's disposed of properly. Good deal. Good deal. Well, as you can tell, when you get into the aerospace quality, things change. You can't just grab rod and start welding and say, oops, I, uh, I got the wrong stuff. So uh, I'm glad you shared that with us. I, I appreciate your time. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for watching Tig Time. I'm Mr. Tig.